Hello, I'm a BX Toy Cat, and welcome back to the second channel video. Today I have some more Geography of Toy Cat for you all. It's also a second channel series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I want to talk about a part of the world which is incredibly historically significant for a whole range of reasons, especially over the past century, but that I guess was never really truly covered too much, at least in my education, because it is the USSR, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. It was, of course, the counterbalance to the US during World War II, and whether you were a fan of what they did or whether you weren't a fan of what they did, which is mostly communism, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, you, you, you you likely have strong opinions one way or the other, but they are a significant, uh, you know, country in the world's history, perhaps one of the most significant to have ever existed, and in today's video I figured I'd talk about what the USSR is and how it's different to modern day Russia, because the way it was always kind of like explained to me, you know, growing up after the fall of the USSR, it was like, oh yeah, the Russia, USSR, pretty much won the same thing, but that's not true at all. There were 14 other countries that made up the USSR, and I figured why not go over each of them in today's video and talk about, you know, what was kind of, you know, how they're doing today, what's significant about them, and stuff like that, uh, kind of in brief, to let you know where the USSR is and how that differs to modern day Russia. So hopefully you do all enjoy this video. By the way, quick little thing, uh, here's the USSR right here, and as you can see, here's Russia. You can see why there's a tiny bit of confusion, but yeah, in this video, let's, uh, we'll be going through all of them, and just, uh, you know, as a brief little overview here, we've got in the, uh, you know, kind of going uh, anti-clockwise around Russia, because that's how we're doing this, we've got Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, we've got Belarus, we've got Ukraine, we've got Moldova, we've got Georgia, we've got Armenia, we've got Azerbaijan, and then we've got the Central Asian ones, uh, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and then the 15th so uh, Soviet Socialist Republic was Russia. There was 15 of them. They were all kind of tied together. There was lots of other countries nearby that a lot of people think were part of it, including myself, but, uh, you know, like Poland and, you know, Hungary, countries that were strongly uh, communist, but they were just Warsaw Pact slash strongly allied slash kind of, you know, like close by, but they weren't necessarily, you know, part of the USSR as a whole. So that's that's why, for the record, Russia has this bit detached here because it kind of made sense that it doesn't really matter that that's part of Russia because, again, there was no real land border between Russia and the other part of Russia just over here. And, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a long story to how they even got that. I key onto that a whole other point. But again, we've got to focus on the ex USSR countries today. And let's get straight into it with Estonia, shall we? So, yeah, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, they're probably best taken as a group because they all were the first, uh, you know, set of countries to go independent from the USSR and uh, basically, you know, in the, in the earlier stages of things. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's three of them right here, very closely linked in a bunch of ways. Estonia is very well known for being, uh, you know, like a, a hub for tech. I believe Skype was made there. Uh, lots, of, lots of tech companies, you know, it's like the, the tech hub of like Eastern Europe. Lots of tech companies have their bases in uh, Tallinn or nearby there and yeah it's very well known for that despite being the least populated of all the uh, you know USSRs uh, with just over a million people Latvia um, is uh, one of the cool things about Latvia is that like Estonia is where a lot of uh, you know like people from Finland go to buy their alcohol because it's a lot cheaper by just going over the sea but a lot from Estonia like to go to Latvia because the alcohol is even cheaper there and obviously as a result of that in Latvia there's a lot of like alcohol problems but that's that's not quite so happy fun times as the next fact which is that Latvia has the biggest city in all of the Baltics there which is Riga so yeah R Riga or Riga is um, obviously like, like you can almost call it the capital of Baltics, as misleading as that whole thing is. But yeah, Latvia is a very lovely country for a bunch of reasons. And uh, I've almost, there's a lot of like cool snow things you can do, including like a, there's a bobsled arena near there. Cool stuff in Latvia. So then we've got Lithuania, which, um, you know, the way I like to describe the three of them is Latvia is like the Baltic kind of like holding down the thing to, you know, keep them together. Uh, Lithuania kind of likes their ties with Poland. And Estonia kind of likes their ties with the, you know, Nordic slash uh, Scandinavian countries. So yeah, there, there's your three bits of the, uh, you know, the uh, there are your three, um, the Baltic countries, they all kind of like the reason they were so separated and the reason they were the first to go is because they were kind of, they feel like they were, in, you know, occupied against their will, forced into a USSR you know, against their will, and that's why when that kind of whole thing ended, that happened like that, and if you ever go uh, to Tallinn, they have like a you know, like a headquarters of the former like, you know, uh, KGB, and it's really weird because one day they just left, uh, you know, since the USSR dissolved, cool stuff going on in all three of these is what I'm saying, uh, but we have to move on to the fourth uh, uh, USSR country, which is Belarus over here, so Belarus, or Belarus Russia is, I believe, is how a lot of like, uh, 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 you know, when I did, a lot of Ukrainians, whenever they mention it, they always say it that way, even when speaking English. So, you know, Belarusia is also a valid term to describe, I believe. But Belarus is the official uh, name of the country. Their capital is Minsk right here. And uh, Belarus is very interesting uh, by European standards because when you look at Europe, at least if we're going to exclude the uh, Caucasian region, but because, you know, that's like, a lot of people think that's technically not and technically is, but let's just not get into that. Let's just uh, quickly mention that all of Europe is generally, since the fall of the USSR, fallen towards the west, you know, the EU, uh, NATO, stuff like that, pretty much every country has gone that way, you know, breaking up in some form or other, but Belarus is always the one exception, where they've pretty much favoured pro-Russia ties, they've had uh, a guy in charge for the longest time, he's a very big man, like, you should look at pictures of him next to uh, Putin, very fun stuff, but yeah, the guy in charge um, has been, he's favoured, uh, you know, pro-Russian ties, he's part of the, um, 
not only the Commonwealth independent states, the kind of successor to the USSR, but he also he, like he favors like a Russian style EU agreement thing. It's 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 very interesting stuff. But Belarus is the like pro-Russian country of all the uh, you know uh, countries in Europe, which is really bizarre when you look at pretty much every other one. So next up we have Ukraine. Ukraine is the uh, most populated of all the former USSR republics, and uh, probably have some of the strongest like national identity of all of them. Again, the reason they fail into the control of Russia is because a whole bunch of things with like, oh yeah, Russian Empire, then World War II, then this and that. And uh, right now they've got a whole bunch of issues because they were recently invaded, or a part of their country was annexed by Russia. So yeah, that is the Crimean region, uh, which is right over here. Uh, you might have heard that from the Crimean War. And yeah, that was just taken from Russia. And now it doesn't really belong to Ukraine anymore. No one officially recognizes it, but obviously they're not getting it back. So that's like, oh, yeah, that's a whole recent thing. So yeah, Ukraine is one of the most recent countries to lose territory to an annexation. So... That's uh, it's not a particularly great one. But in general, uh, the thing about Ukraine, which I think it's most famous for, is the massive explosion in um, the Chernobyl region. Because obviously uh, there was a Chernobyl reactor, which is part of the USSR. And uh, because of a whole range of reasons, again, it's a very interesting disaster by itself. I've been there to the uh, you know site, pretty cool stuff. Um, they had a, there's a giant ra uh, radius where you can't go anywhere near, and the actual reactor itself is still like there's lots of reactive stuff going on there. So they keep pulling new sarcophaguses over it to just like shield the world from the radiation. Very weird and scary stuff. And it's actually not too far from Kiev. If you ever want to fly into Ukraine and do it, I'd recommend it. It's uh, it's not too expensive to tour. And uh, yeah, that's a cool thing you can do with Ukraine. But also in general, Ukraine, strongest national identity. Most recent countries lose territory. And also just, you know, pretty cool country in general. So that's Ukraine uh, right there, uh, which is the second poorest country in Europe after Moldova. So this is something that in my Moldova video has offended a whole range of like, uh, apparently Moldovans, but also Romanians. So yeah, Moldova is a part... Uh, <laughs> Again, this this is like, it's going to offend some group of people either way because that's how, you know, these conflicts in Europe uh, kind of uh, end up going. But Moldova was kind of like a part of, uh, you know, uh, R Romania that like was technically kind of distinct a little bit, but also wasn't taken by the USSR to become a, uh, you know, Soviet Socialist Republic and is now the poorest country in Europe. If you measure it by GDP, I'm not making any judgments on people, but the uh, economy has been rapidly improving at like 10% a year or something. There's been lots of dips where like, you know, the country is just you know, had some issues, but it's generally moving towards the service economy that, you know, again, like the Western capitalism is known for. And in general, Moldova's doing better. It just currently is the poorest by GDP country in Europe. And uh, yeah, a lot of people are surprised that, you know, uh, Belarus was doing better. That is, in fact, the case, whatever reason. And actually, well, wait, before we leave, uh, you know, the Eastern Europe, I guess, uh, you know, SSRs, let me just quickly mention, because uh, it's a tiny little thing, one thing you might know Minsk for is they mentioned it in Friends because, um, I think one of the scientists in the early seasons is going to Minsk, Russia, and uh, that's because I believe when, like, you know, it was just just after, you know, the USSR had fallen, so it's technically part of the USSR, but still, big mistake that, that they goofed up, basically, is what I'm saying, and uh, when I looked into recently, they goofed up twice because it was after that, so they, they really should have known that it's in Belarus and not Russia. So, fun fact that you should know now, just in case your only knowledge of Belarus is from friends, uh, you actually were wrong about it. So, <laughs> I, I wonder if there's, a, there's probably a few people out there. But yeah, as I said, let's move to the next uh, Soviet Social Republic, which is Georgia. So Georgia, I think, uh, is significant for at least... Uh, there's a lot of reasons, you know, why all these countries are significant, but because we're trying to speed through them. But, uh, you know, uh, Stalin is a ethnic Georgian, so there's something kind of interesting to be said about that. Uh, there's two separate breakaway regions of, uh, regions of Georgia. There is uh, Abkhazia and there... Uh, Abkhazia, I'm pronunciation, I'm sorry, I'm bad at it, uh, and there's also South Ossetia, uh, Georgia also invaded by, uh, you know, the Russian forces recently, apparently Russia likes to do that to their former, uh, their, their former other countries, and uh, is a very, uh, you know, significant country, big, uh, for a whole bunch of reasons in the region, and uh, yeah, that is Georgia right there, and uh, one of the last countries to leave the USSR, uh, speaking of last countries to leave the USSR, so this is like another group of countries I like to say, because there's like sick, there's like, you know, free over here, free over here, free over here, and then, like, the big Central Asian republics. Uh, but, yeah, in this in this other group, we've also got Armenia. Armenia, you've probably heard of because of the Armenian Genocide. Again, that's the, the big, well-known thing there. Uh, um, the Armenian Genocide, as far as I can understand, it's a very complex subject, like the fall of the USSR. Would recommend it if you've got a long time to look into something that's kind of, like, sad in the past. But, yeah, it's, it was one of the first modern genocides, so... Go, that's that's a thing to be known for, I guess. But yeah, uh, the, the Armenian Genocide, very, very horrible thing. And it's one of the weird things because it's not recognized by the world because Turkey takes a strong stance that no, did not happen. And whether it did or not, again, I, I, I'm just, let's, let's just not for now. But I'll just say that that's the big thing about Armenia. Also, Armenia is... Um, 
one of the smaller, uh, you know, Soviet Social Republics, at least in this region with uh, less people than uh, many of the nearby countries, like Azerbaijan. So Azerbaijan, uh, the, 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 the longest time, the only thing I can think of it for is like, oh yeah, there's that mission with the safe house in Azerbaijan in one of the, you know, one of the recent Modern Warfare games. But yeah, uh, Azerbaijan is very significant in my opinion because it's one of the, if you count this as being in Europe, which yeah, there's a whole geography discussion on that, uh, this is a Muslim majority country, like something like 97% uh, subscribe to Islam, so... That's pretty cool, and uh, also has a lot of people living there, and also is one of the, uh, I guess, one of the <laughs> uh, Caucasus region's uh, SSRs. There is five more uh, USSR countries to go through. We've got Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, the largest of the former USSR uh, you know, republics by land, sale, uh, land size, uh, not as many people as Ukraine, but has a much bigger area. And uh, again, the reason all of these came into the USSR, because it seems you can kind of understand like Russia expanded to the, you know, to the West during, you know, after World War or two and stuff like that but these were all parts of the USSR because of expansion during the Russian Empire from way before they had the communist revolutions and stuff so yeah Kazakhstan closest one nearby made up of ethnic Kazakhs and uh, biggest of all of them lots of uh, you know like nuclear weapons and space testing went on there uh, then we've got Uzbekistan the only double landlocked country in the world I made a mistake in one of my videos and I was like oh yeah it's one of these I think it's Kyrgyzstan no Uzbekistan is one of the only two double landlocked countries in the world and if you don't count um, Liechtenstein which I guess a few people don't want to uh, it's the only double landlocked country in the world because if you you know the Caspian Sea is not a body of like international waters to trade with which means that to get from Uzbekistan to the sea you have to go through two other countries so yeah if you're in the Uzbekistan capital you walk to the Uzbekistan Uzbekistan border, then you go through either Kazakhstan, China, um, no sorry, or either Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, or Turkmenistan, then through like China, Russia, etc, you have to go through all of that effort to get to the sea, so that's a cool little geography thing that is pretty much significant as being almost unique to this place here. Uh, as well as that, we've got Turkmenistan, which is... So in case, by the way, in case you're curious as to why all these countries have similar names, the, the suffix stan kind of means like place off, and German it means like city. It's got a lot of similar terms in all the languages, so they're all stans, they're all places off their people, so Kazakhs, Uzbeks, uh, Turks, or, or Turkics, sorry, uh, Tajiks and Kyrgyz, Kyrgyz? <laughs> the Kyrgyz, I guess it would be. Uh, but yeah, we've got Turkmenistan, very well known for being a part of the Silk Road from Europe to India. Uh, one of their major cities was a key stop on that whole thing. Uh, we've got Kyrgyzstan, which is very significant to me because um, it had a US airbase in there and the only US airbase in all of Central Asia just after they, uh, you know, they fell as a USSR country, which is a bit interesting, used for the uh, war in Afghanistan, because that's also very nearby. Then we've got Tajik Tajikistan, uh, where lots of Tajiks, known as being a, it's got a lot of natural resources, but it's a very opaque country not no you know international observers are allowed in they just kind of do their own thing over there and i guess you go oh i guess that's a thing that's the case and the cool thing about these three countries that's again kind of tragic because of the reason that what happened is deliberately to cause tensions is the uh, borders between all of them they're just a mess like look at this this is a bit of um uzbekistan inside kyrgyzstan there's a bit of like kyrgyzstan inside tajikistan there's just a lot of enclaves and exclaves almost deliberately created just to cause tensions because uh one of stalin's big things was just moving people all around the place and in fact uh, one of the cool things about Kazakhstan, or again, I say cool things, but they're cool in the past. Like, just cl to clarify my language thing here, uh, is that the, there's something like 300,000 ethnic Kazakhs, like just you know some of the people, uh, you know, people that originally were from the place were just forcibly moved from there everywhere else because they wanted the land. Like they do that a whole bunch. Uh, they redraw the whole borders a whole bunch, and basically that's why a lot of this part of Central Asia is a little bit messy. There's not really too much bad going on but you probably haven't heard too much about them and uh, maybe that's part of why so yeah those are the 14 soviet socialist republics in case you're curious countries that i didn't mention here that should be included mongolia i think for the longest time was part of it but no they were just closely allied to both them and china uh we've got um you know like romania poland etc they were all known as like former communist countries and they were communist but they weren't uh they were they were and they were aligned you know they were warsaw pact countries but they weren't a part of the ussr directly it's like um Think about, like, you know, the U.S. has 50 states. It has, like, Alaska all the way over there. And then there's, you know, Canada. They're close allies, but they're not, like, you know, the same country or anything like that. Or, you know, think of the U.K. and Ireland or... The Think about whole countries like that, maybe. And uh, the other interesting thing that I learned while I was going through this is uh, one of the things that's bugged me for the longest time is exactly how, you know, because um, Alaska came to the US because Russia sold it to them for very, very cheap, like something like eight cents an acre or some ridiculously number. number. So I was always curious to like, if, uh, you know, the US bought uh, Alaska for Russia, one, 
how did they get it in the first place? I get it's nearby, but it's a bit weird they owned Alaska. And two, why were there no Russians living there? So just as a, as a fun little fact at the end here, uh, the reason that, you know, uh, Alaska was part of uh, Russia is because it was founded when everyone was kind of scrambling at North America. Like, you know, the British had some, the French had some, the Spanish had some, the, you know, the, the American colonies were there. Uh, basically, the uh, Russians just took up over part of it, called it Russian America, and only a few uh, hundred slash thousand people ever lived there. So it was easy just to expel them when they bought the land. And uh, that's how it became Alaska, as opposed to Russian America, and that's a part of the reason the border got so weird, because they just kept taking more and more off the British. Long story behind that, but that's uh, that's the Alaska story. It could, to this day, be a part of Russia, but it's not, and isn't that an interesting story. So, yeah, those are, that is the USSR. That was a lot of talking to go through. Hopefully you learned a thing, or two, or three, or zero, I guess. Hopefully not zero, but yeah, um, if you did all enjoy, let me know in the comments down below. I've been having a lot of fun with Geography Talk recently, and uh, I guess I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. Second channel, don't care.